Okay, we got the uh, Taurus engine all torn down now, and I've got all the old parts off the old engine. Uh, we're about ready to start bolting everything up to the new engine, but before I do, I wanted to mention a few things. The first thing is this uh, engine mount. This is from the uh, Ford Escape, and this mount bolts to the block right between the heads. Now, in stock form, the only way to get this mount in or out is to remove one of the heads. Now, in order to do that, because this is an overhead cam engine, you have to remove the timing chain, the camshafts, and then as soon as you crack the uh, head bolts loose, you have to get new head bolts and a new head gasket because they're torqued to yield bolts. Now, I unbolted the head to get the engine mount out of the old one, but I didn't want to have to go through all that trouble on the new engine. So what I found is by modifying the engine mount a little bit, you can actually get it so that without the timing cover on, you can just barely get it into place. Now in order to get this mount to fit, first thing I did, if you notice, right here there was a mounting ear that was unused. So I cut that off first, and then over here, I ground a little bit away from this boss so that would clear the uh, timing chain ma cover mount. And then back here, took a little bit out of here, and then there was a casting mark that was sharp like this right here. I just ground all that down. So now it just barely fits in there and I don't have to remove the uh, heads. So I'm going to just shoot this with a little bit of paint so it doesn't rust and then bolt that on. Now another thing I wanted to mention briefly is this little encoder wheel. Now this wheel along with a Hall effect sensor tells the computer where the crankshaft is and that allows it to run properly. If this isn't lined up right the engine just won't run. Now there's two notches in the encoder wheel uh, for the crankshaft keyway and that allows it to be indexed to the timing cover that you have now the Taurus timing cover has the sensor on this side of the engine, but on the Escape, the sensor is on this side of the engine. And if the encoder is not matched up to this engine, to which uh, timing cover it has, it won't run. Now the rule of thumb for this is that with the encoder installed, when the crankshaft keyway is at the 9 o'clock position, the gap right here in the encoder wheel will be pointing at the sensor. So if I hold it up here with the crankshaft at with the keyway at the nine o'clock position the gap would be pointing at the sensor. So this is the proper alignment for the escape and it does vary uh, based on vehicle. I'm getting ready to install the intake, but before I do, I've got a new PCV valve I'm going to install. Um, now these engines are known for PCV valve failures, and if the valve fails in the open position, the engine will start consuming a lot of oil in a very short period of time. Um, and if unchecked, that can actually run the engine out of oil and of course cause major engine damage. So just as a precaution, I'm replacing the PCV valve. 
Now, I recommend using a OEM PCV valve anytime you replace one because the aftermarket ones just simply often don't work that well. And not to mention PCV valves, even the OEM ones are really cheap. This one's a Motorcraft, which is the OEM manufacturer for Ford. And this one was about $11. So I'm just going to pull the old one out and pop the new one in before I put the intake on. Okay, the engine's ready to go back in now. A few things I want to mention. We ended up using the uh, Escape flex plate because they are a little bit different from the Taurus. The spacer is on there. If you look, it actually uses different mounting holes. This is the one that the Taurus uses. The Escape uses this one, um, but all those were already in there. The water pump, we ended up keeping the water pump from the Taurus. Ford actually used the same pump on the Taurus and the Escape, but in April of 2003, they changed the water pump design. And it just so happens that the two engines I have here are on opposite sides of the changeover date, and that's the only reason they're different. But this one has a smaller tube going into the engine, so I'm keeping this water pump so that all the hoses and everything match up, but that shouldn't be a problem. So we're going to go ahead and drop this back in the car now.
Okay, so the car is all back together and it runs good. Uh, as you can see, it's not running right now um, because you can't hear me talk when it is running. But it does run. I took it on a test drive and it has very good power. I ran it up to like 60, no problems at all. Um, for those of you interested, I am going to include a full list of all the parts that I used for this. Um, and I'm also going to be doing a teardown of the old engine uh, and find out exactly what went wrong in it. So uh, that about wraps it up here.